The Kenya Health Policy that covers the period 2014 to the year 2030 uh, seeks to make Kenya a medical hub not only in the region but in Africa. This will be achieved through the establishment of various medical centers of excellence like the Kenyatta University Teaching Referral uh, Hospital. Joining us this week on Inside the Government is the chairperson of Kenyatta University Hospital, chairperson Olive Mugenda Professor. She's going to help us understand how does this hospital fit in the bigger schemes of things. Thank you very much indeed for finding time to be with us here. Uh, where and what is the role of Kenyatta Hospital in helping Kenya become a medical hub, not only here in East Africa, but in the wider African region? Uh, thank you very much for that question. Um, this hospital, as you know, is a, is a referral hospital. It's a comprehensive hospital, meaning that we, we are dealing with all kinds of diseases. Um, we are dealing with cancer, which we are very strong in. We also have the heart issues. Uh, we have a cataract, we have the renal, we have the you know, physiotherapy. We have, it's a comprehensive center. But to answer your question, uh, we are really focusing particularly on cancer. Um, as you know, 42,000 Kenyans are diagnosed with cancer each year. And out of those, 27,000 die each year. So it's a big problem for, uh, for, for Kenya, and not just Kenya, also for the region. And so when, when we started this hospital, we, we were to help the government uh, deal with the universal health care, and particularly cancer. So we are doing that. Um, we are also working with the uh, uh, national NHIF to make sure that Kenyans, again, to enhance the universal health care. We are working with them to make sure that the Kenyans access the, the services as cheaply as possible so that there's no Kenyan who is denied um, health care because of money. Mm -hmm. For example, um, I'm sure you saw His Excellency commissioning the first um, molecular imaging center in Kenya in a public institution. And this center, the center that is going to help Kenyans be diagnosed with, you know, with cancer early. Because maybe I can give you a bit of statistics. In, in Kenya, and compared to other parts of the world, in US and other countries, about 80% of their citizens survive the disease. In our country, maybe 30% will survive the disease up to a certain number of years. So which means about 70% Yes, eventually die. Cases will eventually will die. Mm -hmm. And the biggest uh, differentiator is early diagnosis. Because if, you're see, if your cancer is seen stage one, stage two, or even before it becomes a cancer, your chances of survival are very high. And that is what happens in those countries. They have the machines that are able to see cancers early and therefore the treatment is done early and the people survive. So that is what the government has done. We have brought these machines. They are called PET scan machine. We have two of them in the country. They are the only machines, not only in Kenya, but also in East Africa and Central Africa. We also have another one called SPEC CT. Um, if you can allow me just briefly, I'm not a doctor, but I, I, I know the difference. Um, the PET scan machines are, are mainly for cancer diagnosis. The SPEC CT is, is, is more general. It's, it's able to see other abnormalities, body abnormalities. So me, maybe you have a heart issue, a kidney issue, and the doctor wants to see the molecular, the molecular uh, level of that problem. They send you to spec CT, which we have. Mm -hmm. or the, but if you have cancer, and the doctor wants to know the extent of that cancer, maybe, the, maybe they're suspecting cancer, uh, then they send you to ask for cancer diagnosis. They send they said you to uh, PET CT. Mm -hmm. So we have these two machines. Uh, three machines, they are very, very key, and they will, they will really uh, play a big role in universal health care, because then um, Kenyans don't have to go to India. Uh, they have been going to India to, you know, for these services, they don't have to go. Mm. And, uh, and, and, and we believe that a lot of Kenyans will benefit, and we will, we will really reduce those percentages, we will reverse them. Very well. Um, let's go back to the history of this institution, and you are part of the team that conceptualize the idea of setting up this institution uh, when you were the uh, chancellor or vice chancellor of Kenyatta University. Um, what did you and your team have in mind back then? What I can say is from my experience, 
uh, when I was in KU and even before, uh, especially when I was studying uh, in the US, I, I realized that a hospital, which is um, in has some affiliation with universities, uh, normally they are the best uh, hospital. And that is what made us come up with this idea. Um, and, and therefore, the fact that we are parastatal now, we are still working with universities, not just KU, but also other universities in terms of research, in terms of the doctors. So that, that is what we wanted, set up a hospital, particularly also dealing with this cancer. The, the original proposal still had the imaging center. So I'm happy that probably about uh, 10 years later, we now have that uh, center for you know, imaging, which we, we, we envisaged you know, that time. And we have, have this hospital, uh, you realize is the only hospital with a research component. Because we also believed now and even then that our doctors and our, our professionals here, it's important that they also do research. So this research can now also inform their diagnosis, their decisions and all that. If you go to the other countries, you see a doctor who is, who is very busy, they have a research lab. They are talking of a paper that came out yesterday, talking about this, and they are able to make very current uh, decision using very current data. So that is the whole idea that we want to encourage our doctors, our consultants to also be researchers. So that as they treat our patients, they are also able to, to, to use the, the current data. Uh, still, I want to take you back um, to the year 20. You know, 11 on June 18th, um, and I remember very well you you were uh, at uh, the National Treasury building, and uh, the current president, Uhuru Kenyatta, was the finance minister then, and I attended that press conference when you signed that loan agreement with the Exim Bank of China. The whole point was to have an institution um, that was supposed to become a research center for university students as well as for um, doctors who want to further their studies and of course improve on their research. Uh, does this dream still live on? Um, no, I, I wouldn't say that the institution was to, be, to become a research center for, 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 for students or, or for, for lecturers. The idea was a hospital, a, a university hospital that we, we then can work with you know, professors, uh, and, and right now that, because, that we are studying around Parasito, we are still working. So the dream is still there. We are still we are working with professors from different universities, including KU. So the dream is still there. The, you know, even where we benchmarked, the management of the hospital does not, does not have to be managed by the institution, like, like I'm hearing you know, uh, a lot of people talking about. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the management is okay, the governance is okay. The most important thing is for us to have MOUs with different universities so that we can you know, bring them together, do, do uh, research together, write proposals together. What kind of a relationship are you now having with um, Kenyatta University in terms of the usage of this facility? Just like other institutions, we, we have a relationship uh, with KU, with other institutions too. Remember, it's, a, it's now a side around Parastato. Um, we, have not had, we have not started receiving students because KU University, they need to now apply to the regulator and say this hospital, we want this hospital to be, we want to practice using this hospital. So we are waiting for that. We have an MOU signed. Um, there, are, there are teams missing, meeting from KU and from here. As soon as that approval is done, our doors are open, even today, to KU students. We have students from other institutions who have written and said, asked whether KU can be there, can be their, you know, their, their training facility. There's, the minute KU does that and they're allowed, we are ready. So uh, by what time or by when do you expect to start having students coming here for the attachment on internships? The students are coming for attachment. They are coming for internships as we talk. And a lot of these students also, they don't have to come through the university mainstream. Some of them come, are coming on their own. Mm -hmm. But that program is going. We have a lot of students here on attachment, on internships. Mm -hmm. Yes. It really depends also on the institution. Mm -hmm. They need to come to us and tell us we want to use the institution mm -hmm. for internship and, and attachments. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of those students. Mm -hmm. When Kenyatta University, this, this hospital was made a parastatal through an executive order in 2019 by the president, uh, how did you feel about that? as one of the pioneers of this institution? Um, 
I was happy about it, very happy about it, because um, by the time the president made, the, made it a parastator, it had not operated for three years. By the time I left uh, KU 2016, and by the time the president uh, appointed me and the board, this hospital was not operational. The machines were there, everything was there, equipment was there, but it was not operational for three years. So for me, when that happened, I was very happy because we were now coming to operation at the hospital and the Kenyans would benefit. Since then, what would you say has been the hospital's biggest milestone? So since then, um, we, we worked uh, very hard. We, of course, you know, opening a new institution, what that means. Uh, we had to get the statutory approvals. We had to, um, you know, make sure that the equipment is working, verifying everything. So we started, we started, um, uh, of course, hiring, we started, then after that, we started admitting uh, patients. So our biggest achievement, I would say, is that it's now operational. I mean, Kenyans can come here and get services from very good consultants, uh, very good doctors, uh, our nurses, and we are very proud of that. We have had very good uh, comments from Kenyans who are coming. Um, especially well, the time that we started, you remember, is when COVID came in. And we were very, we played a key role. As we talk, we have about 80 ICU beds because government put in money for more facilities for ICU when COVID was very bad and, and people needed ventilators or an ICU. So that area, we are very strong. I think we played a key role in terms of COVID management. We still do. Um, our other biggest achievement is the opening of the cancer center. Our cancer center is very, very busy. Um, and particularly the treatment. Um, we have, for example, our LINAC machine, which is for radiotherapy. We are seeing about 80 patients per day for, for cancer treatment. That's a very high number. I think we are the highest uh, public institution uh, giving that service. So the cancer treatment, uh, diagnosis and treatment is uh, our flagship. And we also are playing a key role in terms of the, the heart uh, ailments, the, the renal uh, you know, uh, disease, and you know, physiotherapy. We have special clinics here. So it's a, it's a full hospital with all those services. So we're happy that since we opened, we have been able now to operate like a full hospital. I want you to clear the air. Uh, a lot of people have, they do not understand whether this hospital is a private or a public hospital, and whether it is an institution whereby you can just walk in, get treated, and go home. And I want to let Kenyans know these are public institutions. It's a level six public institution. However, uh, it's a referral hospital. And since the beginning, when we started even the idea of the hospital, we wanted a referral hospital. We wanted a referral hospital where other, level, other levels are referring people to a level six hospital. And we have been able to attain that. Uh, we, 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 unless it's an emergency, uh, you will not find people just walking in. However, if you go to our accident as emergency, it's very busy. Because if it's an emergency, it's the right of every Kenyans to be treated, we see them. Other than that, uh, it's a referral hospital, and we are happy that we have been able to actualize that referral system. Because it is defined what a referral system is. And uh, therefore, if you are going to Kiabu Hospital, Gatodo, and other hospitals, and the doctors feel that this need higher level treatment, then they are sent here. Mm -hmm. Yes. So even Kenyatta National Hospital Yuzo, was modeled along the same concept, you know, of a referral hospital. Yeah. However, today that is not the case. Uh, how, how do you plan to work around to ensure that, uh, you know, that referral model yeah. system is not interrupted? I think, to be honest, I think we have succeeded. I mean, we have, been, we have been in operation now for two and a half years. And I think that would have started showing when we started. So two and a half years, I think we have maintained it. We, we plan to, uh, to maintain it. And it's just educating people. I think we had a very good community outreach when we started. And even the people around, we were able to go to them and explain to them this is a referral. And they were quite happy about it. Uh, so they don't, you won't find people from Kamae, from Kiwaja just walking in, unless it's an emergency. A lot of them come if it's an emergency. But they know that if, it, depending, if depending on the illness, you can go to your immediate primary care doctor and if, if you need to be referred. Kenyatta was modeled along the same line. But for some reason, they, that did not work. 
I think now it's starting to work. His Excellency, the President, um, um, supported the, establish, the establishment of the, the 24, I think 24 uh, healthcare units. We are hoping within Nairobi County. Within Nairobi County. Mm -hmm. We are hoping that is, is now going to turn around the, the number of people who go to, to Kenyatta. Because then they are able to go to those health centers instead of going to Kenyatta, and hopefully Kenyatta can now truly be a referral. Mm -hmm. Yes. In, in, in October last year, um, you know, President Uhuru Kenyatta launched uh, the Integrated Molecular Imaging uh, Center here at Kenyatta University Hospital. Uh, the first one in a public hospital in sub-Saharan Africa, you know, outside South Africa. Uh, how significant is, was that movement for this country? and for the management and treatment of cancer in Kenya? When the president came here to look at the hospital progress, because he has, as you, as you said earlier, he signed, the, he signed the loan. So he has been very interested and very instrumental in making sure that the project is completed. So he came here and we took him around and I had a chance to, to explain to him what we are missing in terms of the manufacturing equipment that we needed to manufacture the consumables, called the isotopes for the PEPSCAN machines. Because that has been the missing link. Uh, the the, the PEPSCAN machines are not very expensive. What, what was the problem is the, the production of the isotopes or the consumables. And I explained to him. And he, he, he was very attentive. The president is very keen when it comes to care of Kenyans and particularly cancer. So I was told to write and explain to him, and I did. And eventually the man was, the man was authorized to, to do the center. So when he came, it was very significant, I'm sure to him and also to us, because you can imagine you have been told you need a PET scan. Uh, you know, you, you need to be scanned. Maybe the doctor has suspected something, and you can't go. Because you can imagine how many Kenyans can afford to go to India. And the fact that now we have the machines and the Kenyans don't have to go. Since we started scanning about a week ago, and already we have done over 100 Kenyans who are in the waiting list. And we are still letting people know that we have the machines. So the numbers are growing every day. And therefore it's very significant, but even more importantly, is that with the early diagnosis, hopefully in another five years or even less, we can see the percentages dropping of the people who die. Mm -hmm. To me, as a, as a person, and I'm sure the president also when he approved this, that is the aim. Can we reduce the number of Kenyans dying from, from cancer uh, because of um, lack of early diagnosis? We have been able to solve that as a country. I think we have solved it for, for the region. And I, I really would like to say it's, it's a milestone for, for the government of Kenya, for the president himself, and, and for us, at the hospital, mm -hmm. and of course the Minister mm -hmm. of Health. In terms of um, you know, the cost you know, of health care, I mean, and um, you know, statistics will tell you that about 30% of, you know, Kenyans spend about 30% of their income you know, on health care. How is this institution expected to help in the management of health costs in this country? Um. We, we, we are already trying to do that. Um, for example, the PET scan. And of course, Kenyans were worried that, you know, they go to India for the PET scan. Are they going to, same, to, to pay the same amount? Are they going to then, um, you know, save anything? And so we are taking the cost aspect very seriously. For the PET scan, for example, we have been able to bring the cost down to 40,000 per PET scan. From how much? Well, there has, I can only compare maybe with Aga Khan, who have a small, a small PEP scan machine, and they charge, I think, 70,000. So for, for the, N, the people under the NHIF, they are paying 40,000. 40,000 is a little bit below the production cost, because the, the production of those consumables is quite expensive. The professionals are expensive. But we said, if that is what NHIF is approving, then that is what they will, we will charge them. And then now we can discuss with the NHIF to kind of increase so that we can meet our costs. But for now, Kenyans who are coming are paying only 40,000. Uh, they don't have to add. Once you get the approval from NHIF, you don't have to add. So you see, that is one way of dealing with the costs. 
um, and, and, and uh, there's, a, there's a new NHIF bill, which I think is going to also addressing the cost, mm -hmm. so that a lot of Kenyans don't have to add anything when they come to the hospital. We are still negotiating with them, and not just us, uh, even other hospitals, because they want to standardize, so that Kenyans don't have to add for these services. But we, st we have started with a critical machine here. Uh, the PEPs can where they're not adding. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, of course, I mean, uh, you know, the cost of um, healthcare equipment is very, very high because uh, like uh, the cost of, uh, you know, a PEPs can, you know, ranges uh, from between 700 million shillings to a billion shillings. As an institution, you know, whereby you're, you, you, you're not per se a profit-making institution, but your role is supposed to offer medical services to Kenyans. How are you expected to break even? That, that's a good question. And uh, I mean, as we say, we are not a business entity. We are a government institution. Even if you broke even, that's just fine. You know, the most important thing is to offer, you know, services to Kenyans. So we are not looking um, to making money. However, we are looking for just enough to be able to, to get the consumer balls, Pay, pay salaries, and, and that will be okay for us because we, we are funded by the government. Mm -hmm. So trying to use the, the money we get as prudently as possible to make sure that we get in the consumer boss, we get the medicine. Um, sometimes it's, it's not easy because also there is also budget constraints. Mm -hmm. But we try to work with what we are given uh, to make sure that we give the services. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as long as we are not also looking into making money, then normally that is okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. What, what percentage of your budget is supported by exchequer funding? Um, I would say uh, maybe a, maybe 90%, 90%, especially because we are new. Maybe if, if we, you know, in, in, in years to come, maybe that, that will, our, our percentage will go up and maybe what we, are depending, what we are getting from government will come down. But for now, because we are new, in fact, we started 100% when we started. But now that we have um, uh, patients and all that, that percentage is increasing, and it will go increasing, and then hopefully balancing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What other innovations or what other centers do we expect to see here going forward? This hospital is a 650 bed hospital, so we are hoping that in 10 years or even more than that, once we stabilize, hopefully the government of the day can look for money and expand it to maybe. I mean, Kenyatta National Hospital, I think, is a 2,000 bed hospital. So that we have space. There's no reason why in the future this cannot be a 2,000 bed hospital or even 3,000 bed hospital. There are hospitals like that. So we have that provision in our strategic plan that we, should, we can double the numbers in 10 years. We also have um, the dream of a children's hospital. And this dream also, uh, we started nurturing that dream when I was in KU as VC. And um, again, credit goes to the president. He listened to the, to the idea and he encouraged us, actually gave uh, some seed money for us to start that children's hospital. So the children's hospital, I'm sure maybe you have time to see, it's already there. It has, we have started building it. Um, when the funds are available, we are going to complete it. So there will be a children's hospital within the facility. It's a 300 bed children's hospital. And then um, also in our strategic plan, we have a plan for a women's hospital. In other words, we want it to be a, a hub, a medical hub. So we hopefully in future, the people who come after us can then uh, carry on the dream, do the children's hospital, the women's hospital. I hope during this time we can do the children's hospital. So that is the plan, then exp expand the, 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 this particular hospital. Where do you see this hospital in 10 years to come? Yes, our strategy is 10 years. I will give you a copy, maybe you can uh, maybe look at more, but I see, in 10 years, I see it being bigger, um, maybe up to, and I think we can do it in phases. You know, I, I see it a bigger hospital in terms of uh, bed numbers. I see a very um, active and comprehensive cancer care is already showing that, as, as, as we have seen. We have a lot of patients. In 10 years, clearly, the children's hospital will be up, and I, I believe even the women's hospital will be up. 10 years. If you look at the work we did in KU, in 10 years is a lot of work. And if uh, people, whether it is me or not, whoever comes, and if we can put that teamwork and that passion, we can see the children's hospital done, we can see the women's hospital done, we can see the, this hospital bigger, and not just bigger, but more, more efficient in terms of you know, processes, in terms of um, you know, advanced medicine. 
So we, we have thought through and put all that in the strategic plan. As we wind up this interview, uh, as one of the pioneers of this institution, and now the current chair, how does it feel when you walk through the doors or the gates of this in institution and when you see patients, you know, walking in and walking out of this institution? You know, Brian, um, that's a, it's a question which, is, which borders on emotional. Because, um, number one, uh, let me say it was an honor. It's not many times that you have a vision and you get to implement the vision. So for the, for the president to have given me the chance to be the first chair and implement the vision, I'll always be grateful. You know, because you know, somehow a lot of people have vision but they don't get into it. So I got that privilege given by him to be able to, to implement the vision. So every time I come and I see patients, really I'm very, very happy. I'm, I'm one person who will go to the wards just, just to see them, just to see how are you feeling. I am very keen on the processes I'm very keen on the comfort of those patients. Um, I, I'm, I'm, and I, I think it, it, it comes from that history. I'm one person, if a patient stops me here, I'll make sure that that person is sorted out. I, I'm, 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 if I get any complaint, I'll go to any length. Because I'm also thinking that this hospital, apart from the beautiful buildings, you know, people need to feel that when they come here, they get the best service and that people care. So apart from being very happy, and very grateful that I'm able to implement this vision. I, I, I also, you know, want to, to show, to show colleagues, to show Kenyans that we can have a public institution that works, you know, works like private in terms of the level of service, in terms of uh, customer care and all that. So, so to answer your question, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that, that I'm getting to implement this, but more so that we are doing it uh, very well and Kenyans, we are giving the services that Kenyans are happy, mm -hmm. yes. So for me, apart from what we are doing now, is what else can we do? Yesterday, I can tell you, and I would like to thank our Minister for Health also, because he's also very proactive, and he wants also the best for the healthcare. So he actually called me and said, Prof, what, what can we do? I mean, he's also very passionate about health. So what can you do to, even, to, to, make, to make what you have even better for Kenyans? And, and we, we talked about some, you know, there's, these are the machines where people go to South Africa to check their, their cancer. And we, and we decided between the minister and myself and his team that it's something we want, we want to get. So that we, we start now, you know, getting all what we need to make sure that it's, you know, it's, it's completely, uh, you know, um, self-sufficient. So in short, I'm, I'm very happy, but we, are still, we, are, we keep thinking, what else can we do? How can we improve it? And I'm sure, you know, if we do that, we also implement the, the plan. In 10 years' time, or even in five years' time, I think Kenyans will be, will be seeing a different institution that they will be proud of. Yes. I think also the, the work we did, um, because really Kenyans appreciate the work we did in KU in 10 years, I think speaks for itself. And therefore, I'm sure, because I've, I've heard out of Kenyans talking to me, I'm sure I'll be remembered, or they'll remember me also, also for the work we did in KU. It was a major transformation of a public institution, um, and we continue to seeing that. So I think that in addition to the work we are doing in the health sector, for me, I feel like I have, I have given my service to Kenyans, and of course supported by, by the leaders uh, that have supported this effort. Very good. Thank you, Thank you very much. Well, Professor Olive Mugenda is the chairperson of Kenyatta University. Uh, teaching referral hospital uh, joining us on inside government to help us understand the role of the hospital in helping kenya become a regional as well as an african medical hub as well as helping the country achieve the universal health coverage here in kenya my name is o'brien kimani this has been inside government thank you for watching enjoy the rest of the afternoon